Lovely to see you all this morning. A warm welcome, whether you're locally in Flixton or somewhere else around the world. It's, it's lovely to have you all here this morning. Um, we really are in the midst of Advent now, and this is our third Sunday of Advent. So we will begin today's service. <clears throat> We've come, thou long expected Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And we now light our Advent wreath for Advent free. Doesn't want to play ball today. Ay, ay, ay. Sorry, I do apologise. It's not playing ball. Right. I do apologise. My me, me candle's being naughty and it's going to take me too long to find one, so you're going to have to forgive me. We did light one in church, but I'll still say the words nonetheless. God, our Father, you gave to Zachariah and Elizabeth in their old age a son called John. He grew up strong in spirit, prepared the people for the coming of the Lord and baptised them in the Jordan to wash away their sins. Help us who have been baptised into Christ to be ready to welcome him into our hearts and to go strong in faith by the power of the Spirit. We ask this through Jesus Christ, the light who is coming into the world. Amen. We pray together. Lord Jesus, light of the world. John told the people to prepare, for you were very near. As Christmas grows closer day by day, help us to be ready to welcome you now. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord have mercy. 
When the Lord comes, he will bring to light the things now hidden in darkness and will disclose the purposes of the heart. Therefore, in the light of Christ, let us confess our sins in a short period of silence. Lord Jesus, you came to gather the nations into the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You come in word and sacrament to strengthen us in holiness. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You will come in glory with salvation for your people. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. God, for whom we watch and wait, you sent John the Baptist to prepare the way of your son. Give us courage to speak the truth, to hunger for justice, and to suffer for the cause of right, with Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> alleluia, alleluia, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight, and all flesh shall, shall see the salvation of God. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to testify to the light so that all might believe through him. He himself was not the light, but he came to testify to the light. The true light which enlightens everyone was coming into the world. This is the testimony given by John when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, who are you? He confessed and did not deny it, but confessed, I am not the Messiah. And they asked him, what then? Are you Elijah? He said, I am not. Are you the prophet? He answered, no. Then they said to him, who are you? Let us have an answer for those who sent us. What do you say about yourself? He said, I am the voice of one crying out in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as the prophet Isaiah said. Now they have been sent from the Pharisees. They asked him, why then are you baptizing if you are neither the Messiah, nor Elijah, nor the prophet? John answered them, I baptize with water. Among you stands one whom you do not know, the one who is coming after me. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandal. This took place in Bethany, across the Jordan, where John was baptising. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. May my words be acceptable in your sight, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Blimey, how we need these words today. I am the voice crying out in the wilderness. I don't know about you guys out there, but days and weeks all feel very confusing at the moment to me. Each one rolling into the next. No two days the same, but no two days much different either. How I miss so many things that I used to do and take for granted. Going to watch my beloved Reds, going to music gigs, visiting art galleries, watching plays, hanging out with friends and family. Hugging people. Oh, blimey, I miss hugging people. Even shaking hands would do. Even shaking hands at the moment would be something. The power of touch, sometimes we take so much for granted. And what I would be able to love to be able to hug each one of you right now. So many things I love doing, and yet here I find myself crying out into the wilderness. I know things are getting really desperate at the moment because of the amount of conversations I'm having with people about the blimming weather. Now that's what worrying me. 
constantly talking. Today I was so excited when I saw a bit of rain and I heard a patter on my window. I thought, oh, this is exciting. And then I thought it was only country folk who talked about the weather. But no, us city dwellers have joined him and we're doing exactly the same. I've even started, and this is how tragic it's got, taking an interest in the shipping forecast. I understand now what Lundy, Dogger, Biscay and Fastnet are, and they are not actually type of tights. They are in fact very useful short-term hands for fishermen so that they know what the weather's gonna be like and whether they can go out and whether they'll be safe. Um, chasing after little wee, wee fish who are playing hide and seek. I used to live on Iona for a couple of summers and it blew my mind how hard the fishermen worked. They were often up at four in the morning and didn't get back till late at night. They would always like it, they said, when there was a full moon as they could see better where they were going in the early hours. It really touched, touched my heart last week when Alex talked about the same moon we look up at is the same one that Jesus looked at 2000 years ago the days long before we had street lights. I remember being in Uganda and realizing just how much back home I had taken the, the, the moon for granted. And yet when we were in Uganda, if we'd been on a night out, we relied on it to get us home. Without the, without the moon, we were in trouble. I remember my friend Joey one morning going out at six in the morning, coming back about an hour later, he'd been off for prayers and he was swearing and cursing. I said, have you, has God had a problem with you today, Joey? Is there a problem going on you need to tell me about? He said, no, it wasn't God I'm annoyed with. It's the moon. The moon wasn't there. And I fell down a pothole and he had blood everywhere, bless him. <laughs> <clears throat> the moon really was our light. And so much today we heard in John's gospel talking about the light, how much we rely on the light. Jesus, John talks about testifying to the light. And it's a light that shines as brightly today as it did 2,000 years ago. And again, like Alex mentioned, 2,000 years really isn't a long time. The world has been spinning, we reckon, for approximately four and a half a billion years. Humans have been on the planet um, roughly about 200,000 years ago. We, 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 it's all started in Africa and then it, we've grown from there around the world 200,000 years ago. And now you think, just 2,000 years ago, came along Jesus. And I believe one of the key messages from today's passage is that each one of us are called to search. And the interesting thing with searching is it's surprising what you find, looking for one thing, and sometimes you find that plus so much more. In this time when a lot of us find ourselves reminiscing at the moment, let me take you back to a time in 2009 when I was searching. Although this is now a confessions of a vicar slot. The thing I was searching for was alcohol. United had got into the Champions League final in Rome and there was a 24 hour ban on alcohol in place. Can you believe it? Anyway, they put this in place to avoid trouble. Well, me and my pals were convinced they must sell it somewhere. Can I just point out, this was when I was a youth worker prior to being a vicar. <laughs> and to our sheer delight, we discovered that if we looked around the fruit and veg shops, they were more than happy to sell us alcohol. It was quite a surreal experience. Go into fruit and veg shop after fruit and veg shop to get another beer and also pick up potatoes, carrots and cabbages on the way. I, I couldn't believe the texture and the different shapes and sizes. They were wonderful. I remember the, the baffled uh, look on the guy on the turnstile as we approached the ground when he saw tons and tons of fans turning up with bag loads of fruit and veg to the matches. We were searching initially for alcohol. In the end, we found so much more. And maybe why I tell you this story is maybe it's the same with God. We find God, and yet once we find God, we in turn find so much more than we initially thought was possible. There is no borders and no limits to Jesus. In some ways, a bit like the universe, it seems they're never expand, ever expanding. We don't know if there is a limit to the universe. It just seems to keep on growing. And maybe it's exactly the same with God and our relationship with God. There is a risk, however, and I will, I will add a word of warning. 
if we're not careful, we can find ourselves uh, distracted in our search and preoccupied with what we think we need or want. Do you remember the good old days when we used to have just four TV channels? Maybe some of you out there can remember. Alex, I bet you can remember when there was just one, can't you? <laughs> but I, I remember those days of four TV channels and how excited I, when the Spice Girls bought us Channel 5, I thought the world is really revolving now. But yet, yeah, if you look at it now, the vastness of all the channels out there with thousands on offer, but yet yeah, really, in the same way as in life, we can only really truly be in one place at a time. I know I whinge on about phones so often, um, but so many people are so often so distracted by the people who aren't even in the room with them. And why is the person elsewhere more important than the person they're actually with? Technology constantly invades our space with its vibrant noise and colors vying for our attention. I shouldn't be too doom and gloom about technology because we wouldn't be here today if we didn't have it. But there, are, there has to be a way that we control technology and it doesn't control us. I heard recently that people pay 1,000 and upwards to go on a weekly tech-free holiday. 1,000 upwards for one week of tech-free holiday. Listen, for half the price, give me 500 quid. I'll turn off your phone with, for you for your week. Come to me. I'm willing to do that. That's the nice vicar I am. But I can't really get my head around it. We all have the ability to control these things and they don't control us. And, and, and I remember Billy saying to me recently, why did Jesus come 2,000 years ago, Daddy, and not now? It's a good question to ask. But I, my answer to him was that I think if he came now, we'd miss Jesus. We'll be too busy with our heads buried in our phones. We wouldn't be looking up and seeing the world around us. But how we interpret and see the world is key to whether we flourish or not in life. Let me share a little wee story with you. I was recently out for a social distance walk with a friend and we noticed that there was a woman feeding some birds with bread. I commented to my friend how much I felt sorry for these birds. They don't, I said to him, I said, they don't have arms and hands. It must be so frustrating. At which point he wisely pointed out, I bet the birds feel sorry for you because you haven't got wings and you can't fly and see the beauty of creation that they can see. I'll leave that one with you. This year, it's fair to say, is like no other. And yet trying to take some grain of positive into Advent, this is one year where we actually can do some watching and waiting. The busyness of Christmas isn't quite as manic as it usually is at this time of year. And maybe that we can learn this year for next year. Maybe we can try to find balance at Christmas and Advent. So let's take time aside. Time aside to celebrate a baby we now know would change our world forever. The same baby who is to light up and illuminate our world. The same baby who John talks of as not being worthy to untie the fong of his sandal. The same baby who bit by bit will continue to transform each one of us with a depth of love, forgiveness, wholeness and healing. The same baby who one day would grow up and be willing to sacrifice the life he so dearly loved in order that one day, just one day, we may see and believe that God is real, right here amongst each one of us now. Glory be to God. Glory be to God. And all glory on earth be to God. Now join in the words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, 
for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. <clears throat> for our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again, in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and Son was worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Sorry, I think I might have lifted, missed out a little bit there. Apologies. I'll now hand over to Alex now for our prayers of intercession. Just on mute from our gospel reading this morning, we heard that wonderful uh, chapter again about John the baptizer. And in Jesus, God will be fulfilling those prophecies about this promised Savior of ours. So let us pray now to the living God who always keeps his promises and who knows us so well. Loving Father, Keep the church faithful in telling the good news and comforting the desolate and actively loving justice and drawing many to freedom through the joy of your forgiveness. And as the church, we pray for the whole world that there may be integrity in leadership, mercy and justice for rich and poor alike, and for the strong as well as the weak, and that they there may be peace among nations and respect for everyone. And as family of believers, we pray for those around us now and their needs right now and for the families we represent and their needs as well. And may the love of Christ be shown in what we do and how we speak and how we spend our time and resources. And Father, in compassion, we call to mind all those who are locked in physical or emotional pain and all who are weighed down with worry as well. And those who feel guilt and despair and no way out. And may we who work in your name have the skills and love to help restore and refresh them and comfort them and free them with you working within them. And as resurrection people, we commend to your love those who have died to this earthly life. May they and we in our turn experience forever the joy of your eternity. And we bring to mind those who have died this week, our friends, our neighbours, and people that we don't even know by name. And remembering those we do know by name who have meant so much to us in the recent past and over the years gone by. And as followers of the living Christ, we praise you for the prophets of old, for John, the last prophet of the Old Testament and the newest in the new and for the promises honoured and the victory over evil gloriously accomplished in him who loves us, who
who will fill our lives with love and hope for the future. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank you, Alex. Thanks for those wise words. <clears throat> so now we turn to the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another with a sign of peace, with a wave or a smile. Peace be with you all. Peace be with you. Lovely to see so many smiley faces. <laughs> so just to, before we hopefully can get the video, it doesn't always work, but just to say thanks so much for all the generosity with the fundraising, a particularly massive thank you to everyone who, who, who uh, brought toys to the toy service. It was a phenomenal, we had three car loads to, to hand to Wood Street Mission and, and Tidus, which is domestic violence um, charity. So we split the two between it, which was just amazing. So thank you so, so much. And please continue to support us at this difficult time. We'll now watch a video to, to encourage us on this journey. Hi, I'm Roisin and I've raised over £140 for my daughter's brand new unit using Easy Fundraising. Let me show you how I do it. So say I want to buy a top from John Lewis. I open the Easy Fundraising app and search for the retailer I'm looking for. Click on Shop Now and it will take me straight to John Lewis's website where I can browse as normal, look for the item I'm after. I'm going to go for a top. Select the item that you want and add to basket. It doesn't cost any extra and the retailer knows that I came from Easy Fundraising so they'll give a donation back to the brownies. I even raised a £30 donation on car insurance recently. The brownies now have raised over £523, all for free. Yeah, please do have a look at that site. It's so easy to do. It's a really, especially when you're buying Christmas presents, if we can go, if we could all do it through the easy fundraising site, we'd make um, quite a bit of money for church, which would be wonderful. It's a difficult financial time. Thank you. <clears throat> So we now turn to our communion. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is indeed right and good to give you thanks and praise. Almighty God and everlasting Father, through Jesus Christ your Son, for when he humbled himself to come among us in human form, he fulfilled the plan you formed before the foundation of the world to open for us the way of salvation, <clears throat> confident that you, your promise will be fulfilled. We now watch for that day when Christ our Lord will come again in glory. And so we join our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven to proclaim your glory, forever praising you, and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. We praise and bless you, loving Father, through Jesus Christ our Lord. And as we obey his command, 
Send your Holy Spirit that broken bread and wine outpoured may be for us the body and blood of your dear son. On the night before he died, he had supper with his friends and taking the bread, he praised you. He broke the bread and gave it to them and said, take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When supper was ended, he took the cup of wine. Again, he praised you. He gave it to them and said, drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And so, Father, we remember all that Jesus did. In him we plead with confidence his sacrifice made once for all upon the cross, bringing before you the bread of life and cup of salvation. We proclaim his death and resurrection until he comes in glory. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ will come again. <clears throat> Lord of all life, help us to work together for that day when your kingdom comes and justice and mercy will be seen in all the earth. Look with favour on your people. Gather us in your loving arms and bring us with St. Michael and all the saints to feast at your table in heaven. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory are yours, O loving Father forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> we break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us peace. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Amen. We do not presume to come to this your table, merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in your manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under your table, but you are the same Lord whose nature is always to have mercy. Grant us therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat the flesh of your dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him, and he in us. Amen. <clears throat> the body of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. The blood of Christ keep you in eternal life. Amen. We just continue to hold a moment's silence to sit with God and with one another in our thoughts and our prayers.
we pray together. We give you thanks, O Lord, for these heavenly gifts. Kindle in us the fire of your spirit. And when your Christ comes again, we may shine as lights before his face, who is alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. We thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all peoples. Amen. <clears throat> Christ, the Son of righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you and remain with you now and always. Amen. So some notices, people. Um, a sad piece of news. Um, I don't know how many people will remember, but Harold lives there. Um, lovely man who used to come. He was mainly came to our midweek services on the Thursday. Um, lovely man, Harold. Fascinating guy. And he's died just a few days back. Um, so we've got his funeral uh, a week on Tuesday in church. So please keep him and his family in, in your thoughts and prayers, please. Um, he's a lovely gentleman. <clears throat> um, also, so just just things to, to, to add. On, on Wednesday this week at 10 o'clock and also on Saturday is a repeat of the same service at 2 o'clock. Um, the, the, there's a service, Let the Light Shine, and it's something myself and uh, Bill have put together. And basically, it's going to be a mixture of listening to some beautiful pieces of music, uh, some space for silence and, and some reading. So it should be a nice service. Um, <clears throat> if anyone's interested in coming, please come and join us. And that's in church. Obviously, we do social distancing and wear masks. Uh, and that's um, this, this Wednesday at 10 and uh, it's Saturday at two. Another thing to draw your attention to, at six o'clock today, we have the All Souls service where we remember loved ones and all um, all those people who have touched our hearts and minds who are not with us um, as we know it, if you like, but they're still there somewhere and, and we look forward to that day we all meet again. Um, so <clears throat> that will be this evening uh, at six o'clock um, for anyone who wants to attend that. Thank you, that'll be good. Um, uh, ju just also to be aware, we haven't got a church service two weeks today in church, or, or we won't have a Zoom one online. We're doing it, it's all going to be online at Manchester Cathedral that day. We're, we're uniting all the churches for that particular Sunday. Um, so do have a look at our website for more information, but that's in two weeks' time. But we will have a, a normal uh, Zoom service next Sunday. <clears throat> It'll be lovely to see people there. Um, you, you do, do have a look on our website. You'll be, I'm not going to leave this on for hours, but at least you can just get a rough idea of all the stuff that's still going on. Quite a bit of online stuff this year. Uh, and, uh, and obviously we can't do kind of carol singing as such, but, um, um, but we are doing online carol singing. So <clears throat> please do look uh, on the website for more information about the various services and stuff. And can I say a massive thank you um, for your prayers, Alex and Stuart, for leading Zoom today so well. I didn't see one hitch so far, so no pressure, but you've still got five minutes to go. <laughs> OK, um, <clears throat> does anyone else have any notices? Nope. Nope. Right, smashing. Um, oh, yes, and that's about receiving the newsletter. So that's just some more information for you there. I think most of you already subscribed to that. <clears throat> So it brings us on to our final hymn, which is Lo, He Comes with Clouds Descending.
So just before the final words, thank you ever so much for joining us today, whether it be in the local area or around the world, you're all very welcome. And um, for those Zoomers, if you want to stay on for have a little chat afterwards, it'd be lovely to have a chat with you about the shipping forecasts. Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.